Hi there, Chris Chapman account Moto Legends. Today I'm going to try to provide an answer to the question, how do I know when I need to or when I should exchange my helmet? And that might be related to the amount of time you've owned it, how much use it's had, or it could be following some form of accident. Do I need to change my helmet? It's a question that, as you might expect, gets asked a lot here in the shop. People have maybe had their helmet four, five, six years and they want to know whether it's still going to be performing its primary role of protecting their heads. Perhaps they've had an accident, they've dropped their helmet and they want to know whether there's still life in the helmet. I'm not sure that today I can give a totally satisfactory answer. And partly that's because there's no scientific or objective test that enables us to see whether a helmet is still working. But We've been doing this a while. I personally visited lots of factories. I've spoken to the people at the helmet factories. I've spent a bit of time with those who manage the race teams, look after the racers at the circuit. And so it's my intention today to share with you everything I know. And my view is probably that if you combine what we discussed today with a bit of common sense, you're gonna be in a better position to make an informed decision. Now, by nature, as an individual, I'm quite cynical. And before I got into this business, my view was that the manufacturers gave their helmets a limited warranty of five year lifespan, because that's what I'd always been told, swap your helmet after five years. My view was that they were saying that purely because obviously they wanted to sell you a new helmet down the road. And indeed, if you search on the internet hard enough, you will find lots of conspiracy theorists who will try and convince you that the limited lifetime of a helmet is completely bunkum. It, these guys will explain to you that you can pretty much wear a helmet forever. I think the problem, however, is compounded by the fact that the manufacturers, the helmet manufacturers themselves, are not very forthcoming when it comes to this subject. And I think they're not, probably because they are concerned about liability issues, that they don't want to come out and say, this is good, or that's good, or if you drop it from this height, it's fine, because they're worried about ending up in court if somebody ends up with brain damage and so on. To this end, I went a couple of years ago to a well-known helmet manufacturer on the continent. And I had a huge list of questions that I wanted to ask about how one could tell whether a helmet was still performing that primary function, whether you could prod the EPS, whether it was hard or soft, how high you could drop it from, all of those questions. I wanted to know, I wanted them to tell me when I could tell my customers when their helmet needed to be replaced. But every single question I asked was completely stonewalled. It was like being on an episode of House of Cards where that guy said, you might think that. I couldn't possibly comment. The bottom line is that it's never possible to be completely sure whether your helmet is okay or not after a certain amount of time or after a certain incident. But I think there are things that you can do to put yourself in a better position to make that decision. There are two key components to a motorcycle helmet in terms of protection and safety. There's the shell and the EPS. The shell is the outer shell. It has two roles again. The outer shell is there to dissipate the energy of an impact, and not to absorb it, but to dissipate it. So when you hit something hard, it's trying to initially spread the force of that energy around the helmet, so it's not all concentrated in one point. The other role of the shell is to prevent the penetration of sharp objects. So if you land on something sharp, the corner, a piece of metal, a piece of fence and so on, you don't want that penetrating the shell and reaching the head. So that's the second role of the outer shell. But arguably, the most important element within a helmet is not the shell, it's the EPS. Now EPS stands for expanded polystyrene and basically expanded polystyrene is that stuff that you find in the packaging of kids' toys or the packaging when you take a TV out of the box and so on. And what the EPS is doing is when you hit your head hard, hits the road, hits the curb, you want the EPS to absorb the energy of that force. And what it's trying to do is slow down by absorbing that energy, it's slowing down the speed with which your brain is sent careering across from one side of the skull to the other. And that's important because when your brain hits the other side of the skull and bounces back, that can cause bruising and that bruising can cause brain damage. So let's go on now, let's talk in a little bit more depth about the EPS. I love it when they give me a hammer to play with. Anyway, I've already 
kind of implied that the EPS is arguably more important than the shell in terms of protecting your head. And that's a little bit misleading, perhaps, in that they both work clearly in concert. An EPS around your head without a shell is not going to be any good. Similarly, a shell without an EPS is not going to be any good. They both work together. But it's nonetheless true that in most accidents, it's going to be the EPS that bears the brunt of energy absorption of slowing the brain as it moves across the skull and so on. So this is a piece of EPS, a piece of packaging material, exactly the same, maybe not the same consistency, but the same kind of material that you'll find inside a um, motorcycle helmet. So if I were to hit this hard with a hammer, it will leave a dent. Something like that. And that's exactly what is meant to happen. And what this means is that the EPS has done its job because I hit the polystyrene hard, it slowed the impact, that energy wasn't transferred through, in this case, to the table, and that will be what slows the brain moving across the skull. But in the area where the EPS is compressed, it is no longer going to be as effective at absorbing energy. So if it were hit a second time in this area, it would not be anywhere near as effective. So an EPS in a helmet is a one-time use material. It doesn't bounce back. This will never bounce back. It's got no memory. Once it's impacted, it cannot be relied upon again to absorb the energy of an impact if you had another accident. And at that point, if you have something like this has happened to the EPS, the helmet should be replaced. Technically, it doesn't have to be replaced. That's up to you. But if you want to be sure that your helmet is going to absorb energy in the way that it's meant to, in the way that you would expect it to, at that point, the helmet needs to be replaced. The problem is sometimes knowing whether a helmet or whether the EPS has been impacted and whether it's been sufficiently impacted to require replacing. Because if it was a very light and gentle falling down on a bit of grass, then that's not going to have impacted the EPS. Problem is that that damage to the EPS is not always easy to say, easy to see. So what happens these days, the better quality helmets will have a painted EPS, sometimes black, sometimes gray. And what this means is that if this is impacted hard with your skull, this will deform and you'll see cracks in the paint. So if you, after an accident, were to look at the helmet, one of the surefire ways of knowing that the EPS has been impacted is if you look inside and there are then cracks in the EPS, then that means almost certainly the helmet needs to be disposed of. Problem with identifying damage to the EPS is that the EPS can become damaged not just on the head side of the EPS, but on the shell side. So if we look here, we've seen already how on the inside especially when it's painted black, you might be able to see cracks, but we can test and see if there's any deformation, if there are any kind of dents in the EPS, that will tell us that it's been impacted. But you can equally get deformation in the EPS here on the inside of the shell. So let's say you've come off your bike on a track day, you land hard on the grass. There'll be a heavy impact, but there'll be no signs of it on the outer shell. Typically you have a helmet with a softer shell, something like a shark helmet or a polycarbonate helmet the shell is going to bounce back. You might see nothing on the outer shell, but you could have an EPS that was heavily dented. But that's going to be totally invisible to the eye, so you will never be able to see that. So that leads to the question, what is the level of impact that defines an irreparable level of damage, a level of damage that means that I've got to change the helmet? And unfortunately, and I'm sorry about this, but it's the same story, there is no simple answer. From the people I've spoken to, the reality is that if you dropped a helmet from four, five, even six feet onto a soft surface, onto grass or onto mud, nothing's going to happen. But if you fell off a bike, even standing still, so not at speed, but if you fell off the bike and your head hit the road or a curb corner, then that helmet probably would be a helmet that needed to be replaced. There's another issue that comes up with regard to the EPS, and that is degradation of the EPS over time. Now, whenever we ride, we sweat. And what happens is that sweat gets absorbed by the EPS. And as that sweat dries, it hardens and shrinks the EPS, rendering it less effective. So it is estimated that an average rider who's riding six, seven, eight thousand miles a year, a rider like that, the EPS is going to shrink by between three and five percent a year. And with that shrinkage, the 
EPS becomes ever less effective. Might it doesn't render the helmet ineffective immediately, but over a period of time, and that time, according to the manufacturers, is going to be after five years, but there does come a time when the EPS is not going to do the job that it was intended to do. Now, Shark give their helmets a five-year warranty, but when I was with them and asking them questions, what they pointed out to me was, was that in hotter climates in their South American markets, they only warranty their helmets for three years, and that's because it is hotter, people sweat more, and the EPS shrinks to a greater degree, which I think convinced me that there was actually something in this degradation of the EPS. It is a real thing. It's not just something made up by the manufacturers. One of the things that I did ask when I was at Shark was, surely there must be a way of being able to tell whether an, e whether an EPS has hardened. Surely you could just take your finger and push it in, and if it was hard, it meant it had shrunk and was no longer absorbing energy. If it was soft, I postulated probably the helmet was okay. And I was told that that's not the case because as the EPS shrinks, it's not always visible on the head side. That hardening, that shrinking goes on more towards the shell. One thing I can tell you is that our high mileage commuters here who are doing 20,000 miles a year, these guys exchange their helmets after three years years because they are doing more in three years than most of us are doing in five years maybe even ten years and they will simply not take the risk of expecting their helmet to last for five years the other possibility i suppose is because their helmets are pretty smelly after three years and i can tell you i've smelt those helmets that's not untrue damage to the outer shell of a helmet can render that helmet unsafe and unusable on a couple of bases. First is if the shell is damaged and cracked, it won't dissipate energy in the way that it's meant to. So hit your head against something hard, that initial impact, the energy is dissipated around the shell. And if there's a crack in it, it just won't do that. A damaged shell will also lose its ability potentially to resist penetration. The other role of a shell is to stop sharp objects coming through into the EPS and reaching the brain. And that won't happen or won't happen to the level that it's meant to happen if you've got a cracked shell. The difficulty as ever is knowing whether a shell is too far gone, what the level of damage is that is acceptable. Basically, if you run your fingers over the helmet where there's been perhaps an impact, if you can feel a kind of roughness, splinter-like feeling, that's the fibers of the composite. If you can feel any of that, then the helmet is basically done for, it's time to get a new helmet. Stone chips, by contrast, are of no consequence. So on a motorbike, you're gonna be riding along 60 or 70 miles an hour. Occasionally, you're gonna have a stone or something knock into the lid. It's gonna take the lacquer off. It's gonna make be put a paint chip in the helmet. That's really not particularly important. Similarly, if you're walking along, you hit the helmet against the wall, against the corner. That doesn't matter. It's a minor chip. There's no great force involved in that. So paint chip, not an issue. The other thing you need to look, however, you need to look at, however, is deformation in the shape of the shell. And again, you can do this by rubbing your hand around the shell. You won't find this on a super hard shell like, say, you get on an Arai helmet, but you might find it on a softer shell, certainly on a polycarbonate shell. If you can feel a dent or there's any kind of deformation in the, or indentation in the shell of the helmet, then again, I'm sorry, once again, it's game up. Okay. So we've looked already at damage to the shell of a helmet and to the EPS of the helmet to try to ascertain at what level the helmet becomes unusable. But how about a helmet that's been in the garage in a box for 10 years? It sounds like a bizarre scenario, but we do get people who come to the shop who say, I've had this helmet lying around, I didn't go biking for ages, it's in the garage, is it still okay? Some people would suggest that over time evaporation can eat into the EPS and render it less effective. Some say that the glues in the, or the, whatever the chemicals are in the laminate shell, that they can degrade and that can have an effect. And whilst I think this is theoretically possible, I personally take the view that a helmet that's been in a box for five years, it's got to be okay. It can't be worse than a helmet that's been worn and used for five years. So a helmet in a box for a period of time like that will be fine. 
But there will be a point. A point will come. I don't know when that point is, but it could be 10 years time. It could be 15 years time. There will come a point where a helmet that, even though it's not been worn at any point, that it's not going to be wearable. But my question is, why would anybody want to wear a helmet that's 10 years old? Over any 10 year period, helmet technology will have moved on. A modern helmet is going to be so much better to ride in, probably safer, have all kinds of conveniences, it's going to be more comfortable than a helmet that is 10 years old. So a 10 year old helmet, it might be legal, but my view is, why would you take the risk? And once again, I come back to the fact that this is our head. We are talking about protecting our heads. If you have an accident, you hurt your head and that results in brain damage, then basically it's game over. No surgeon in any, in any hospital can repair brain damage. And rather harshly, I think I come to the view that if saving a few quid to protect your head is that important, save yourself a lot more money. Just take the bus. Given that we're not being particularly helpful or I'm not being particularly helpful or useful in giving you the definitive information you want to know whether your helmet needs to be retired or can continue to be worn, the question arises, is there anyone out there who offers a helmet inspection service? And the answer is yes, there is a company set itself up recently. And what they do, they laser the shell of the helmet to see if there's any damage to the shell. They use a holographic process, they laser an area. They can do the entire helmet so they can scan it in seven different places to see if the entire shell is okay. But in essence, if you've had one bang, you might send your helmet to them. They laser that area. It creates a 3D image, a holographic image, and that will enable them to see whether there's been any delamination in the fibers that create the composite shell of a helmet. And if there is any damage to the shell, they will be able to identify that very quickly and very easily. And that, of course, is all well and good. But we're still not convinced that this is a thorough, robust, and proven service because not a single helmet manufacturer has been involved in this process. They've not spoken with any of the independent laboratories. It is a couple of guys who have set this system up and I think when it comes to protecting brains and heads, that's just not enough. I spoke with the company about this and they said, but it doesn't matter because any delamination of the fibers in a helmet will render it unusable. And that may be the case, but I've got to say, I personally, would like to hear that from a Shui or an RI or somebody who's involved in helmet manufacture to know that their view of the world is actually robust as it were. But of greater concern to me is that this test only tests the outer shell and does nothing about the EPS. And as you've heard, as we've been discussing, and as any manufacturer will tell you, the brunt of energy absorption, the thing that is going to protect your brain and stop brain damage or help prevent brain damage is the EPS and this test does nothing with regard to the EPS and again I spoke to the company about this and their view was that you will always be able to see whether there's damage to the EPS but that just is not the case we've spoken about how the damage to the EPS might be inside the shell it won't identify the shrinkage over time of the EPS that as we've seen over time renders it unusable. So what they're saying is just not true. And my view is that useful as this service is, and I'm not decrying it, if you want to check that your shell's okay, that's fine. But the company is only doing half the job. Their processes have not been peer reviewed and they really, despite the fact that they're going out and telling people that their helmets are safe, they are not in a position to do that because they do not have an ability to look at the EPSs and therefore I'm afraid the answer to the original question, does anyone offer a helmet inspection service? The answer is actually no, right now there isn't. So where do we get to, where do we end up on this particularly thorny issue? Well, I've been open and honest. I have to tell you that as a company, we have absolutely no interest in sending anybody a helmet who doesn't need a new helmet. I've explained that as a private individual before I got into this business, I was always of the view that the five-year rule was something that had been created by the marketing departments of helmet manufacturers, and that was probably just a cynic in me. But having spent the time I have now in this industry, I accept that helmets do have a limited life, and I understand that they don't perform the same once they are damaged. And I've spoken to a lot of experts on the subject about how they detect damage, and even they admit, even the guys at the track admit that this is not a science. Now, at the track, 
if one of their riders has an accident, the slightest damage to the EPS, the slightest indentation to the EPS or scratch on the shell, they throw their helmet away and supply a new one. And you may say, all well and good, but that's easy for them. It's not their money. And as a private rider, therefore, you may take a different view. And it is true that you may have an accident in a helmet, continue wearing it, and if you don't have another accident, you might get away with it. But remember what we're talking about here. We're talking about heads. We're not talking about boots and gloves. Any damage you can do to your body can normally be put right, but we cannot fix things if we have an accident and our brain becomes damaged. We're talking about accidents here that are not gonna put you in traction for a couple of months. We're talking about accidents that could potentially put you in a wheelchair for life. And what disappoints me at times about bikers is that they see the acquisition of motorcycle gear as some kind of competitive sport. The only thing they seem bothered about at times is how cheaply can I get it? How long can I make it last? And I think that's a bit of a dumb game. I think it's not a zero sum game because you as the biker can lose out in big time here. And the way we see it, 500 pounds buys you pretty much the best helmet you can buy. You can spend more, but you're not gonna get safer. 500 pounds buys you a fantastic helmet. It is guaranteed to work. It has a life of five years. That's a hundred pounds a year. Now, what else can you get for a hundred pounds? Well, you can get 15 gallons of gas. You could get seven packets of cigarettes. You get 25 pints of beer. You will get a fairly decent meal at a pizzeria for two. Or you take that £100 and it can give you the best possible protection you can get for your head for a full 12 months. And given the amount of money we're talking about, I really do not understand why some people are prepared to take a risk. So I hope you found that interesting. If you want to look at the kind of helmets we do sell here at Moto Legends, then if you go across the website, that's motolegends.com. When you buy from us, we try to make the process as simple, straightforward and risk-free as we possibly can. There's no delivery charge on any item of protective where you buy from us. Returns are totally free. And what's more, we give you a full 12 months in which to decide whether you do want to return something to us. We have the best price promise in the business. Now, John Lewis is rightly famed for its never knowingly undersold price promise. We go one stage better. If you can find anyone selling anything that we sell at a price that is lower than ours, we will beat that retailer's price by a full 10%. There are a few terms and conditions associated with what we call our price beat, nothing particularly onerous, but if you are going to price beat us, I suggest you go over to the website and check out what those terms and conditions are. If in the future you'd like to see bulletins from us about new products, then if you go to the website, at the top of every page, there's a piece of script that says newsletter sign up, click on there, within seconds you'll be in business. If however you prefer to get your information videographically, that is to say in, that is to say in this form, then we'll be Simply delighted if you want to become a subscriber to our YouTube channel, and you can do that by clicking on the button below. Now, this year is 2021. Last year, we gave away to a YouTube subscriber a Mutt 125cc motorbike. We'd customized it a little bit to make it look like a Steve McQueen desert sled. This year, we've gone up market a little bit. We're giving away a 250cc Fantic Caballero Scrambler, but we're not giving it away this year to a YouTube subscriber. We're giving it to someone who follows us on Facebook. So if you want to stand a chance of winning this fantastic little bike, which we're giving away just before Christmas this year, we're recording this in November, so we're giving it away in only a few weeks' time. If you want to stand a chance of winning this great little bike, then go over to our Facebook page and obviously follow us. Finally, I'd like to make a play for our fabulous little shop here at Motor Legends. It's a small shop. We are based about a mile from the centre of Guildford, a mile from the railway station. And whilst the footprint of the shop is small, as I've mentioned, it is attached to our warehouse where we have more than two million pounds worth of gear arranged over three floors. Technically, that makes us the second largest motorcycle apparel shop in the country. But we think that we are far more than just the amount of merchandise we have here in the building. We're all about service. We're all about personal fitting. If you want to check us out, visit Trustpilot. We have the highest five-star ranking in the business. And when you come to see us, we'll serve only the finest Italian Italy coffee, or we'll serve you proper Yorkshire tea in a proper teapot. And who knows, if you're lucky, you might even get to sample one of our delicious motorcycle-shaped shortbread biscuits. Anyway, this has been Chris. I hope to talk to you again soon.